reflexes can be extremely useful, such as by jerking your foot away from a hot stove or by assisting you in catching a falling priceless antique. But some reflexes are just not even worth it. They make things awkward and sometimes even dangerous. Fair warning, number two on this list is arguably adult-oriented. Allow me to explain. Number one is Gargalesis, which is better known by its street name, Tickling. Yes, the tickling reflex, which triggers laughing and convulsions when high pressure is applied to sensitive areas, notably the armpits, sides, feet, and groin. You may be wondering why this is a bad thing. Isn't laughter good for you or something? Well, yes, if a parent is tickling their child as a form of play bonding, but tickling is also a highly effective form of torture. The gargalesis reflex has been used as an interrogation and punishment technique since before recorded history. Probably. I don't know, nobody wrote it down. Ancient China, Japan, and Rome definitely participated, as did many other cultures. And believe it or not, sometimes it straight up killed people through asphyxiation, or the inability to catch their breath. Yeah, not so funny now. Speaking of asphyxiation, there's uh, a really awkward reflex associated with that too. Number two is the death erection. I told you this would be awkward. Men sentenced to death by hanging are frequently further humiliated by, uh, inadvertently triggering the multi-ball power-up in their trousers. Seriously, it's gotta be pretty awkward for the executioner. The exact frequency of occurrence is unknown because nobody wanted to be the guy studying corpse boners. Best guess, it's somewhere around one in three. It can happen for a combination of reasons, involving pressure on the cerebellum or spinal cord. This is actually differentiated from autoerotic asphyxiation, a euphoria which comes from a buildup of carbon dioxide. Now, to make things even more awkward, the death erection frequently doesn't disappear for more than four hours, a condition called priapism, which is what the Viagra commercials warn us about. No need to call your doctor, though, unless he also happens to be a mortician. Number three you may be doing right now after that last one, blushing. It's a psychologically driven, physiological response, usually associated with anxiety or embarrassment. Your face, ears, neck, and sometimes chest burn red. Blushing is related to the fight or flight response, a series of unconscious activities in your autonomic nervous system which react to perceived threats. This is a problem, for example, for someone trying to give a public speech. Already anxious, you become even more anxious when you realize you've turned bright red. It's a feedback loop telling you to drop your note cards and run away. It's not your fault though, it's just biology. Fortunately, with enough practice, your body will eventually get the message that there is no threat, and you'll stop being a tomato long enough to make it through your slideshow. Speaking of slideshows, number four is contagious yawning, an involuntary facial reflex usually exhibited during boredom, sleepiness, or in this case, when someone else nearby is yawning. Yes, it's contagious, even across species. Feel free to pause the video and go try to make a dog yawn right now. I'll wait. Yawning probably isn't detrimental to your health or social status like the last three, but it is pretty unhelpful in the sense that scientists can't agree on what it's even for. Believe it or not, it appears to be linked to social empathy. For some reason, yawning is more contagious between people who are emotionally close to each other. People with autism are less likely to catch someone else's yawn, further indicating its social role. And humans less than six years old and dogs less than seven months old were shown to not be affected by contagious yawning nearly as much. What does all of this add up to? Nobody really knows. Perhaps it helps synchronize everybody's moods and sleep cycles. But overall, it appears to be pretty useless. But number five is not only useless, it's dangerous. The photic sneeze reflex occurs when you trigger a sneeze or set of sneezes from looking into bright light. The exact mechanism here is not yet understood, but it probably has something to do with your trigeminal nerve, which is the main facial nerve, overgeneralizing signals. One of the situations this can frequently occur in is when you are driving. This is problematic because, as we all know, sneezing forces you to close your eyes. A study found that a sneezing person loses control of their car for an average of six seconds, more than long enough to get into trouble on the road. Because of this, wearing sunglasses while driving can actually save your life by reducing your chances of sneezing. Thanks for watching Art Explains. 
you can check out more videos linked on the screen and hit the subscribe button to learn whenever new videos come out. See you next time!